Well, hey, all you lovely people, whoever is out there watching. Um, I do see there are a couple people in the chat already. Thanks for stopping by. Um, if you're here last time, you know what we're going to be doing. I'm just going to be working on this painting here. So um, not going to be pulling up uh, any chats on the screen like normal, just because I'm going to be focusing over here on the painting and everything. But um, I do see you. Feel free to throw some questions out there or any uh, movie-related, horror-related topics you want to go into. Totally down to uh, chat about that. But yeah, it's just going to be just going to be me uh, doing a little painting. So hope you all are having a lovely night. And I do see um, I see Katie popping the popcorn is here. Um, See David's here. See Jason in the chat. Phillips in the chat. Jen. Hey, Jen. Thanks for stopping by. Um, yeah, I see plenty of people in the chat there, y'all. Thanks, uh, thanks for stopping in. Let's see. We're going to go up here. Hope everyone's having a uh, good Monday. I know Monday is usually not the best start of the work week slash school week and everything so hope yours is uh hope yours is going okay at least I'm watching over here to make sure i'm not completely covering up the uh covering up the painting while i work <laughs> let's work on let's work on miss sam's eyes here Oh, it's Polar. How you doing, Polar? Hope your new puppy's still doing well. I know you were had your hands full with it there for a little bit. I wish I could say I had a, uh, a more solid plan when I go into a painting, like go left to right or light to dark or, or anything like that, but I really don't. I'm also trying really hard not to lean over and cover the painting. Some of these colors are uh, <laughs> some of these colors are a little little too light, so you gotta do you gotta do multiple coats, which you know it's not the not the most fun to keep having to to keep going over colors you've already done, but all right, anyone seen any uh, any fun movies lately? By the way, Jason, um, typically I don't, but I have been, I have been throwing around the idea in my head of opening like an Etsy store for my paintings, um, and doing that kind of thing. If anyone would be, um, if anyone would be interested in, in purchasing. But uh, I haven't set that up yet. I'll have to have to look a little bit more into it. Make sure it's something I can I can do. I'd probably do something where I'd, I'd paint one, and then do do something where I could like replicate it pretty closely, and then whenever someone ordered one, I would uh, paint you know paint it. Hopefully, have a pretty quick turnaround on it and get it sent out. My biggest issue, honestly, y'all, is is shipping. Like, actually, 
getting into the dang car and getting to the post office. That's what gets me. And shipping's not cheap, unfortunately. So I want to move away from the light gray for a little bit. Oh my God, Philip, you got two week old kittens, man. I'm jealous. Oh, I'm so jealous. I love dogs and cats. They're both heckin' adorable. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna work on Miss Miss Samantha's nose here. Hopefully I'm not blocking your blocking your your way too much. I promise that'll be a nose in just a just a few minutes. But actually, while we're there, Um, Jen, I would love to get her to sign this. Unfortunately, I don't know that she's going to many conventions right now. Um, if, believe me, if she pops up at a convention in a soon enough time frame, I will definitely get her to sign it. But, um, yeah, I just, I, I haven't heard of her doing any conventions, really, so it'd be kind of hard to to get it. I am going to be getting a few signatures, though. I, um, I'm going to be meeting uh, Roger L. Jackson, the voice of Ghostface for the first time. And I've decided I'm going to be getting his autograph. And I 3D printed... And I'm, I'm still finishing it, so it's not done. But I 3D printed a replica of the voice changer from Scream 3. And um, I'm, I'm actually printing a couple because, a fun fact, one of them is going to be uh, given away on Steven's channel over at Craven Something Scary. But... Um, one of them is going to be for me, and for that one, I'm going to be getting Roger L. Jackson to sign it. Here's a little sneak peek what it looks like so far. There's no uh, screen on it. I'm adding, uh, adding a screen to uh, so I can put in the LEDs, because we see at one point it has LEDs in there. Um, so... Going to be adding a screen for the LEDs, and I might be adding a few more electronics to, to have a little fun with. We'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see what I, how detailed I, I feel like getting with it. Yeah, you know, I'm going to take a quick second here and I'm going to I'm going to just hide the camera because I want to set up a different angle here. Well, I'm not going to hide the camera. We're just going to we're going to do this together. I think we I want to want to try to get y'all a little closer so that I can lean in and get close without blocking your view. That's that's what's getting me. I usually 
I usually get really close when I paint. So it's a little, little awkward for me not being able to do that. And I don't want to completely block your view. So just adjusting a tripod. Hang in there. <laughs> That's a little too close, I think. Let's let's hang out there. You can't see the entire painting, but you can see enough. So uh, I think I think that'll work for now. Jen, that's a good point. A, a good question. I don't know why none of the other none of the other casts go. I think I think it'd be really cool to see some of them there. But you're right; they just they don't go. This angle, all right, y'all. I'm uh, I'm leaning close, but I'm not blocking your view out. Mayan, I'm sure you'll get one at some point. There. Uh, I, I give a ton of them away. Uh, Craven something scary. His 10K live stream, I believe, he officially announced already, but it's going to be the 15th of next month. Uh, and there's going to be several of them given away at that point. So I think there's there's going to be I want to say seven or eight different ones given away on that stream. So if you're there, you got a pretty good chance. Yeah, Courtney. Courtney doesn't attend either. I, I don't. At least I haven't. I haven't seen one. And she does have a pretty big schedule. And that's that's one thing that I don't want to make it sound like the original cast isn't doing much, but the original cast, or the newer cast, they do have a a pretty big schedule uh, of stuff going on, especially like Jenna. And Melissa both, they have crazy schedules going on. So those two I understand. But you know, some other ones I feel like I feel like you could you could make it. <laughs> is this is my camera out of focus or am I just Y'all y'all in focus there? Yeah, there we go. Aim you up a little bit there. Man, I'm I'm just noticing the angle that you're viewing Melissa from, and she is staring right into your all souls. <laughs> Yeah, Danielle, they, they look a lot alike. Oh, my God. Polar Friends is one of my comfort shows. I'm constantly re-watching Friends. Who's your favorite character, Polar?
Monica and Ross do. It was like, oh my god, those two were such good siblings. It was ridiculous. And the routine from the, uh, oh my god, you just you just said it. The routine from the New Year's Eve. Absolute gold. We need some Joey and Monica over here. Those are some good ones as well. Joey, Joey is, I think, an undercover genius. And he's really, it's, it's weird because, you know, he always comes off as super dumb, right? But what what really got me is that episode where it was New Year's Eve again, and um, Chandler and Monica weren't weren't out yet. Like no one knew about their relationship, but they really wanted to kiss. And Chandler tells Joey that, right? And Joey's like, "Okay, I'll take care of it." He goes and talks to like a couple people, and just completely works it out to where everyone everyone kisses so that Chandler and Monica can kiss but he just does it so expertly I'm just like that's he's an undercover genius I'm telling you I'm sorry if this is all over the place. This is actually how I I do it. I just I have the attention span, at least in terms of painting the same thing. Um, a very small attention span. I'll just say that because I'll be working on like a cheek or a nose for a minute, almost done with it, and then I'm like, no, nah, gotta go over here. Joey doesn't share food. Poor little Emma. Trying to get a, what was it, a grape? I think she was trying to get a grape. <laughs> and Joey, Joey just was not having it. Oh yeah, from from what we saw of Joey Jin, you're actually I don't know how this turns into a friend stream, but I'm totally I'm okay with it. Um, everything we saw of Joey, he was not a good actor. I think one of my favorite Joey as an actor moments was when he was at the um, oh, what was it the soapies when uh he lost and you know you're supposed to have like the the gracious losing face like the camera's gonna be on you so you gotta you gotta be like oh yeah good for them but it, it come to him he like slams his hand down on the table and is cussing oh so good so good oh yeah man i do remember that who was that that was uh that was a very, Susan Sarandon. Yeah, he came back as Susan Sarandon's character. He got her brain. You don't recognize your mother. <laughs> Polar, what do you mean he totally Faith hill that loss? I don't, I'm not familiar with Faith, Faith Hill doing that. Is there, was there a, an award show I missed where she just blatantly was like, I should have won? I don't doubt there is. I always thought the gracious losing face was kind of BS. People people are upset when they lose. We know they are. What about 
the time he was supposed to be working on a movie in Vegas, but the movie got shut down. And it's, instead of admitting that it got shut down, he just starts working in a bar. Oh, no. She lost the kid. I mean, Carrie Underwood's a pretty huge force in the in the country game, so I can see it. But uh, that's a little bit of a faux pas. I'll have to I'll have to see if I can find that clip. It's oh yeah, Jen. That's that's right. It's an honor just to be nominated. Don't give me any of that. I wanted to win. Ugh. Speaking of TV shows, I'm going to steered a little bit back to horror i guess uh, on a one to ten how excited are y'all about um camp crystal lake i'm super excited what's up larry i see you in the chat there it's gonna be kind of like last time i'm not gonna I'm not gonna be pulling anything up on the uh on the the screen, but I, I do see everyone here. Oh, what's up, Kirsten? I see you jumping in there too. I'm still just working on Samantha. We were, for some reason, we got a real good chat about the screen or not screen, um, friends going on. So if you're, uh, if you're into friends, feel free to join that chat. <laughs> You know, uh, Danielle, I'm, it's not intentional, but it does look like that. Um, let me change this. In. Sorry, I, I got my phone over here so I can see the so I can see the chat, and for some reason, it's showing showing me the video at like one one forty four resolution, so it looks awful. I'm like, please tell me my camera's not out of focus right now, but it's not. Um, but no, Danielle, it's not. It, it, if you see the heart there, it does indeed look like it. But um, that's just how the shadows fall. So you could entirely take it that way. taken care of and then I'm probably gonna go work on the uh, work on the blade here. It's got a ghost face in it. Let's see if we can get that taken care of. Give this time to dry so I'm not sticking my hand in it and moving paint unintentionally. I do that a lot because I you know I end up moving my hand over where there's wet paint and getting sticky and you know it's a lot of fun. Oh my gosh, I also love Big Bang Theory Polar. Same question as friends. Who's your favorite character? I mean, I kind of have a... I kind of have a feeling that I know since you named your dog after a character. So... Uh, but just in case, who's your favorite character? Seeing a couple of Sheldons here.
I would assume Sheldon is also is also Polar's favorite since she named her dog. But okay, my favorite character is actually Raj. I love Raj. Raj or Stewart? Stewart was really fun. Like for such a, I mean, he, he became a little bit more of a character toward the end of the series, but he was such a small character when he was first introduced. And I thought they were able to do some really good things with him, even being such a small character. You know, one of my favorite moments from uh, from Big Bang Theory, and it's kind of relevant right now because the new movie's coming out here soon, but it's when uh, Sheldon shows Amy uh, Indiana Jones movie for the first time, and she's uh, she, she ruins it for him by pointing out how how Indiana Jones is irrelevant to the story. Absolutely love it. Also, Amy's reaction when Sheldon buys Sheldon buys her a tiara. One of the most priceless things ever. Also, a great part about that scene was when Shel like she's hugging Sheldon so tight, and he's like, "I may have overdone it with the tiara." He doesn't say it, but the look is on the look on his face. He's literally saying, "I may have overdone it with the tiara." Okay, this cheek is almost done here. I'll have to go over that one part, the one color again, because it's it has a, a pretty low opacity, unfortunately. Or I guess a high pass so you can see through it. Definitely takes a, a coat or two to make sure that it's, it's good and covered. Danielle, now that you've said that, I can't, I can't unsee that heart on that uh, on the cheek there. <laughs> yep, it's definitely sticking out to me now. See, Danielle says, favorite episode was when Penny was addicted to gaming. Oh my gosh. When she comes over and she has... Uh, I... I forget the exact setup, but when she finds like a Cheeto in her hair and just eats it and keeps going, I was like, okay, you've, you've gone a little far now, Penny. <laughs> Let's work on this news a little bit. What's everyone getting into? This for me, I don't know how it is for y'all, but for me, it's a stormy Monday night. We got some 
thunderstorms rolling through over here. Joey got all the women from, from friends. I don't get it either. Yeah, Jen, that's that's uh, one of the problems I thought I was going to. You know what? Let, give me one second. I can actually I think I can I can resolve that to where the mic stays a little closer. I'm going to be muted here for a second, but give me one one second. There we go. Now the mic is right by me, so it's easier to uh, it's easier to uh, speak into it. Danielle, I you know what? I actually don't have a, a mic like that. I wish I did. I uh, it's weird. I don't I don't actually play video games. I don't even have any video games or any consoles or anything. But um, I was able to move the mic stand, so now it's right next to my right next to my head. So it should be. Should be easier to hear me now. I said we were going to a few minutes ago, but now we're going to work on ghost face within the blade so that paint down there can dry. It'd be nice to have a PlayStation mic so I could move around and it was it would move with me. You would have pegged me as a gamer. That's interesting. I um I honestly never really have been. I don't I don't know why. I can just there's been like a time or two where I'll get um you know, I'll get really interested in a game and I'll play it for a day or two, but then I always lose focus. I think the uh the most interested I've ever got in a game is actually um oh, it was the uh Sim City. Where you actually like develop and build the city out? Yeah, I got really into that for, and I've actually got into it a couple times, um, but I always end up just kind of putting it down and not picking it back up again. Kind of like Radio Silence does with some of their story points. <laughs> Sorry, subtle dig at Radio Silence. Let's see here. We're going Mr. Ghostface's nose or Mrs. Ghostface. So out of the three ghost faces that were in um 
that were in, and I say three because, yes, we did have Jason at the beginning, but he obviously doesn't count. Um, out of three ghost faces from, from part six, who who do you all have as your favorite? I'm going to be honest. They're not the top of the field in, of ghost faces, in my opinion, but which one of those do you all have as your favorite? Ooh, Danielle saying Quinn. You know what? I'm gonna agree with you. Quinn was Quinn was feral. Like she had she just had some looks in her eyes. I'm like, I would not mess with that woman. We got another one, Russell saying Quinn as well. Yeah, she was she was legit, y'all. She she did not mess around. Oh, Philip, man, you haven't seen six yet? Oh, buddy, I'm sorry. Um well, I, I guess spoiler alert, uh, we're, we're, we're talking here. I'm sorry you haven't seen it yet. It's been out for a while now, though. I assumed it was okay to, to talk without giving a spoiler warning. Um, you know, there's a lot that goes down in part six. She kind of reminds you of the Happy Death Day mask. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. She kind of does have that round face look, doesn't she? Oh, wow. That's a good point. <laughs> I've never thought about that. <laughs> oh, that movie's a little underrated in my opinion. The Happy Death Day? I think it's a really good movie. Trying to... Let's see. I'm going to lift the camera just a tiny bit. Let me go. Well. Here we go. All right. Give me a second here. Ooh, here we go. Um, when Quinn smiles, it's a nod to Happy Death Day. You know what? It, it has the look. I uh, I didn't see it before, but now that you've mentioned it, it definitely she definitely has the has the look. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but we got some serious thunder going on outside my apartment right now. Yeah. Kirsten, we, uh, it was actually like, we got, I got a notice from our, our energy company saying like, there, there's a risk of power outages and stuff, but it was supposed to happen earlier today. We didn't get anything, but here recently like, we're getting a little bit of lightning, a little bit of thunder, but nothing crazy just yet. 
Just hoping, hoping don't have a power outage. I got to work later. Obviously, I don't want my stream to cut out in the middle either. Enjoying hanging out with y'all. Had thunder last night. My lights were flickering. Yeah, I've, uh, Jen, I've had a flicker or two here in the past hour as well. I was cooking earlier and noticed the, uh, noticed the little flicker in the lights. And I was like, well, might not make the stream, but everything's held off so far. Just know that if I, uh, if I do cut out, it's not because of, I didn't purposely cut the stream off. It's probably the thunder. Or the storm. Okay. Okay, so this is a fact I found out last night that I maybe it's common knowledge, but I didn't know it. All right, so we all we all saw the movie. Um, we all saw Megan, right? The new doll movie came out this year, early this year. Great movie. I thought I had maybe a little bit too much hype, but um, we all saw Megan, right? Well, Katie, remember the uh, the little girl that Megan was like made for or whatever? So that actress and the little girl from Black Phone, remember? Um, remember the movie uh, Black Phone with Ethan Hawke where he was the killer? Um, well, the, the little boy who's trapped, the main character, his sister is the one helping him. The, the actress who plays his sister and the actress who plays Katie in Megan are sisters in real life. I did not know that till last night. Yeah, I was looking at the, um, I'm going to uh, Scarefest in uh, Kentucky, and I was looking at the guest list, and both of those, both of those actresses are going to be there, and I noticed their last name was both McGraw, and I'm like, I wonder, so I went and Googled it, and uh, yeah, they're, they're both I mean, they're sisters, and they're both really accomplished actresses already at a very young age. It's kind of crazy, honestly, what they've been able to accomplish already. All right. Um, I saw someone ask really quick. I want to scroll up to find that comment. Danielle, it does. Uh, painting does bring me a sense of calm. It's, uh, usually, I usually I've got music or a movie going in the background and I'm kind of just, kind of just relaxing. So it definitely does bring me a, a sense of calm. I, I really enjoy doing it. Whoa. Big old ghost face mouth. There's a lot of paint. I am uh, technically Southern. Yes, Daniel. I'm uh, originally from Tennessee. But like East Tennessee, like real redneck stuff. <laughs> you painted houses. Yeah, I can see that being I can see that being peaceful. I um I was in the Navy for a bit and I was stationed on a ship at one point and um part of the responsibilities of the uh, department I was in was upkeep of the ship, which included painting. So I've spent many a days painting the decks of ships before. It's uh, it can be monotonous, but it can also be very relaxing and therapeutic.
ghost faces coming along. All right, I think I saw Law and Order as well earlier in re regards to TV shows. I'm actually, I don't think I've ever watched an entire episode of Law and Order. What else? What other TV shows y'all into? Throw something out there. You know what I've wanted to get into, and any, if anyone's in the chat who who's seen it or knows anything about it, let me know. I've seen a lot of little clips of the show Suits uh, about like the the law office or whatever in New York. And it kind of made me interested in that show. Um, but I've never actually seen it. I do know it was just added to Netflix. So kind of the perfect time to watch it. But I don't know if it's like, oh, if it's worth getting into something. Because I think there's a ton of seasons of it. So be a long commitment. Your spine went to hell in a handbasket. So now you're trying to hand... At designing a zombie MMO video. That's awesome, Danielle. Sorry about uh, sorry about your medical issues, though. That that always sucks. Hopefully it's hopefully it's something that. Well, I don't know how else to say. It. Hopefully you're not constantly in pain. My dad had uh, my dad had issues like that as well as um, leg and ankle issues, and he was he kind of was constantly in pain. So favorite TV series is CSI. That's another one I've never seen. Um, Philip, man, if you go, uh, if you go to Scarefest, then uh, I'll be there, man. Stop and say hi. Uh, it's a huge lineup of guests so far. So, Eureka is good and related show Warehouse 13. I've never seen either of those. Man, I might have there, there's some I might have to get caught up on. My problem with TV shows, and um I don't know if anyone else would have this problem, but I if a TV show goes too long. I, I I can't do it. I lose I lose interest. Like I don't lose interest in knowing what happens, but I'll lose the motivation to actually watch the show. And I never end up finishing it. Like a, a perfect example is uh, uh, Supernatural. I've sat down to watch Supernatural three separate times. And each time I do get a little bit further in it, but I always just, you know, there get, there comes a point where I'm like, all right, I just, I don't want to, I do, I don't have the motivation to continue watching. I have the interest in knowing what happens, but I can't do it. Can't keep watching. It's just too much. Danielle says she loves longer shows. I mean, and that's cool. It is uh, some people, I, I would wager to say a lot of people do like that. I just, I can't, I lose, I just lose the motivation after a certain point. For me, like, give me, give me like five or six really good seasons and call it done. You supernatural went on for what damn 13 seasons? This is too much. This is too much. So, and I, I, a lot of times, what I'll do is I'll go Google, Google what happens because, like I said, I do still want to know what's going on, what's happening. I just don't really want to watch. So, I'll go read. Like, read transcripts of the episode. <laughs> Not quite the same, but you still get what's going on. Russell, 15 seasons. Okay, I thought it was only 13, but... 15, that's... That's just... Come on, y'all. That's just too much. That's just too much. Yeah. 
there's only so many times you can die and come back to life and give a give a reason that we're actually going to believe. I just realized I totally started painting over doing a second layer of this with the wrong color. That's definitely supposed to be number one gray, not number two gray. Well, that'll be fun to that'll be fun to cover up. Hey, Carrie Crave Cinema, look at this popping in to say hello. How you doing, Carrie? Yeah, just working on Sam tonight. Trying to trying to get her done. I'm gonna be this. I've got plenty of time to get it done, but I um, just wanted to wanted to jump on a stream and paint a little bit. I've been wanting to paint this like ever since I ever since I did the last stream last or I don't know what day it was last week or whatnot. But I've been like, oh, I can work on this. But I'm like, no, I want to save that for for streams. So I think I'm gonna have like. I'm going to do like one a week where I work on a painting. And when I finish that painting, just start a new one. <laughs> Y'all can come along with me as I paint. Michael is looking as beautiful as ever on your wall, by the way. Carrie, I wish, I know, I, I wish I still had that painting because I'm going I've already talked about it, but Scarefest, both Nick Castle and James Duke Courtney are going to be there. So I could get both of them to autograph their side, which would be so sweet. I was, I uh, was pretty proud of that painting. I thought it, thought it turned out pretty well. Lining up the, uh, Lining up the, the mask, I thought I tried to do it in a way where it really did look like the exact same mask, only one half of it was one half of it was weathered. I thought I did a pretty good job at it. For those of y'all who don't know, I did a uh, I did a painting for Carrie Crave Cinema for her birthday, I think two years ago at this point. Um of Michael Myers and half of it is the original mask. And then the other half is the aged weathered, bloody burned version from, uh, from um, I think that I, I was using Halloween kills as the example at that point. Cause Halloween ends is just Halloween ends is borderline too much. The mold is what gets me with Halloween ends. Not a fan of the moldy look. Sandy Johnson saw it, you say? How did how did that happen? I, it's probably a stream that I wasn't aware of or that I am aware of. I just didn't know that she saw it. But how did that happen? Like, how did it come about that she was able to see it? Okay, here. I'd love if you painted fan art of Sam and Stu back to back holding their knives. That would be I, I'm working on a Sam and a Stu separately. Um but yeah, doing them together. Doing them together would be interesting. Maybe in their in their kitchen where the the climaxes of one and five take place. Oh yeah, okay, that's 
that I, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, I, I remember that interview. I just didn't I didn't realize it was in the background um, viewable. Oh, thank you, Carrie. I'll uh, yeah, I'll pull that up here. One second, y'all. I'll show you the uh, painting. Um, well, I'll try to. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Where did you send it, Carrie? Did you send it to... Which one did you send it to? Yeah, I'm not seeing it. I, I think you sent it to my my bearded one, which I don't have pulled up on my computer, but I'll show everyone at some point. Yeah. Yeah, one second. I think I can. I got it. It'll just take a second. Oh, there you go. Now you sent it to the... That's the right one. Thank you. Now, just add it to add an overlay. Oh, perfect. There it is. There's the, uh, that's the Michael I did for Miss Carrie for her birthday. I thought it turned out pretty well. And it's very subtle, but the orange color in the background is also different. It's a little bit more brownish on the, uh, the right side. Yeah, that did turn out really well. I was I haven't seen it in a, in a minute. I really like if you if you cover up half of it like with your hands and look at it, you can see like, oh, it's only the 1978, but if you cover up the other one like, oh, that's very much very much the uh Halloween kills mask. Yeah, I was pretty proud of that one. I'm glad you like it so much, Carrie. All right. Now, where were we with Miss Samantha here? I think we're going to go. I think we're going to work on this eye some more. It would be really sweet to, to meet Melissa Barrera and try to get her to autograph this. Or one of them. Um, I was thinking about when I finished it, taking a photo and like tagging her on like Twitter and Instagram and all that and seeing if, seeing if that worked. I did do one of a... Um, he's kind of like... Um, how do let's see how do i describe this man he's a a chef he has a cooking show on youtube or he's part of a kitchen on youtube that has a cooking show 
Uh, his name's Brad Leone. He's absolutely hilarious, but I did one of him. Um, and I, I tagged him in it on Instagram and he actually, he actually added it to his story. And I was like, Oh, I've made it to the big time. <laughs> Thank you, Russell. I would. I. I hope it would be. Like I, said, I. I try to try to do flattering images of people. You never know how they're going to react, though. Because that was my thought too on getting some autographs at conventions. Is maybe I should do custom art for everyone. And then get them to sign a custom art piece that I have painted of them or of their character. But I'm just not sure how it would work out. Not sure if everyone would everyone would appreciate it. Plus, all the canvases I use are already stretched. So I would have to walk in with a heckin' canvas stretched around wood, and you can't really like fold it or roll it or anything. So that would be a little annoying. But, uh, yeah, I might do it for, for some people. Dewey is a, a good example. So going to be meeting David Arquette, our uh, wonderful, lovely hero Dewey, in October. What do y'all suggest for, like, to take to, to get him to sign? Because I have... As of now, I don't really have anything in mind to get him to sign. So I don't know what I'm going to be doing for that. So y'all got any suggestions? Should I do a photo? Should I make something? Or what? What's up? Thank you, Russell. I, would, I did hear someone say they... they they suggested maybe trying to do like try to 3D print his badge, which would be cool. But um, I mean, I feel like that'd be difficult. Probably make it work, but it would be a little interesting trying to get all those little details. I don't know if y'all have ever messed with 3D modeling, but it is complex. To say, to say the least. Really complex. Oh, I didn't even rec realize my cousin John was in the uh, was in the chat. I just <laughs> I just wiped paint all over my phone screen, y'all. I didn't realize I had paint on my finger. <laughs> oh man. That's funny. Yes, my cousin John is in the uh, is in the chat. What's up, John? Are the characters and actors share their race and on the screen? I ask because Danny says, yeah, family can be rough. Melissa is Mexican. Tara is Mexican. Puerto Rican. Josh is Puerto Rican. Josh is... Josh? Jo by Josh, do you mean the actor who plays Danny? But I think, I think they do. Yeah, like, um, I know Sam and Tara, that's that's one reason I I, I kind of just don't really jump on board with any any of the. Um, oh, he might be related to Tara. I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, because well, if he was related to Tara, it'd have to be through his dad. Uh, because because we know that. We know that Tara's mother, Christina Carpenter, was high schooler at during the events of Scream 1. And during the events of Scream 1, or like a month before the events of Scream 1, is when she got pregnant with Sam. So Josh seemed to be a little bit older than Sam, in my opinion. I wasn't, I can't say for certain. That Danny Danny Brackett is older than Sam Carpenter. He just kind of he had he seemed like he was older, you know. Um. So 
if he was to be related to, to Tara, Tara's dad maybe, but I just assume that Tara's dad was the same age as Tara's mom. But we can't, I mean, you know what they say about assuming. Yeah, he looks more worn out. You're, you know, you're, you're right. He looks like he got them city miles on him, you know? To quote Will Smith. <laughs> Carrie, I didn't mean to paint my phone. It just kind of, I went to, to swipe up so I could look at the comments and uh, didn't realize I had paint just clumped on my finger. So what are you going to do? It happens. I love how it kind of looks. I mean, at least in my opinion, when I'm looking at it, this painting kind of looks like a mess right now. I'm hoping it comes together soon. <laughs> Criminal Minds, Russell, that's a good one. I did watch, I haven't watched all of it, but I've watched a ton of seasons of that. And that's another one, though, that I've, that I'll watch for a while and then I'll kind of lose it. So I'll, uh, I'll drop off, but I always come back to it. You know? Danielle, have you ever tried to 3D model your paintings? So, no, but what I have done. Um, there's this thing called a lithophane, which is essentially you take a 2D image and you put it on a 3D printer and it it makes it so all the dark areas, like the eyebrows, are thicker than the lighter areas. And then what you do when you're done, you shine a light through it and you can see the image kind of in like 3D. It's weird to explain, but I have done that. And um, I'm actually, I really love Lithophanes. They're they're really simple, but I'm just fascinated by them. Uh, if you ever see the stew train, if you ever seen photos of that um, from uh, Craven Something Scary, I actually, one side of the stew train is two separate Lithophanes of stew. But in terms of actually, um, actually like three modeling and like making figures out of them, no, I haven't done that. The most three D modeling I've done was the Stu Train is probably the biggest one I've ever done. It's I, I'm, I modeled that and that took forever because there were so many different parts that had to had to fit together. It was just. It was crazy. That one took me a long time, a lot of trial and error. Then I um, 3D modeled the 3D modeled the Stu Funko Pop with a TV for a head. That was that was a pretty fun, uh, pretty fun 3D model. And then most recently, the voice changer from Scream Three which I still have to finish. Um, 3D model of the canvas. I guess I'm not really understanding what you, what you mean by that, Daniel. I'm sorry. At 3D printing, no. I'm, a, I'm really good at printing. However, modeling... Uh, there's there are two separate things. Like uh, modeling more involves like creating the the print uh, in software. Three D printing, like making the things physically, I'm really good at that. Uh, but I usually, if it's something that's like readily available, like a, a lightsaber, um, for instance. Though those someone else has already modeled those, right? So what I'll do is I'll go grab that because most of the time there's huge repositories where people upload them for free, right? I'll go grab one of those, a really good quality model, and then I will pull it into a slicer, which is the software that actually 
convert some model into 3D printing instructions. And I'll edit it in there. Oh, I got you. You know what? That that kind of is like Han and Carbonite. That kind of is what a lithophane is. But lithophane has the added thing of, of the light behind it. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's very similar to a lithophane. And if you do it with an image like this, it'll be, it'll, it'll come out like that as well because there's not very, there's not a lot of contrast, I guess, or not contrast. There's not a lot of variation in the color. So it doesn't, it doesn't like, um, the gradient is, is pretty easy to do. So it would it would appear like five six different levels uh, of print, but yeah, I could I could do something like that. I could make I probably will. Uh, I've been tinkering with the idea of printing a big lithophane for my uh, for like the background of my my YouTube studio area, so that when you know when I'm doing a normal live stream and y'all see my face, you can see a lithophane in the back, but the benefit of it is you can just change out a lithophane and put like you know instead of a scream one put a michael myers one in there or put a nightmare on elm street one in there depending on what you talk about on that particular live stream so it's pretty cool i i, I feel like hold on a second i want to show you what a lithophane looks like a good example of one danielle so because i like i said they're I find them super fascinating. Um... That's a good example, I feel. Uh, it's too small. Okay, one second here. Let me just add this. All right. There you go. That's that's a lie of the fame, Jamie. Uh, I'm sorry, Danielle. On the left, that's what the print itself looks like when there's no light behind it. But on the right, that's what that's what the the print does when a light is shining through it. So you can you you make you can make like lamp covers out of them. Um. You can make there people actually make boxes, so you print six different lithophanes, and then you put a bulb in the center, so you can like turn and you have six different images. Yeah, it's I'm fascinated by them. Like you can get surprisingly good detail out of them. They take a really long time to print, but I think they're worth it. They turn out pretty cool. But I could do something like that with um, with a painting. Okay, let's finish up working on this. Oh yeah, I, I've done that, Danielle, with uh, with a red light. They they do look really cool. Um, let's let's finish up this eye. I think I'm gonna finish up the the eye here, and then I'm not sure how much longer I'm gonna go tonight. I. Uh, I do have to work a little bit later, so I'm probably going to call it here soon. Just finish up this little section, and then I'm, when I'm off camera, I'm probably going to go over the areas that need need a double coat of paint. So not just painting the same area over and over. <laughs> I imagine that could get kind of boring to watch.
I'm sorry, Danielle. Yeah, I if I didn't have to work tonight, I'd stay on a little longer, but I want to make sure I can also stop smearing paint. I don't know how well y'all can see it, but I got paint there where it's not supposed to be. I got paint here where it's not supposed to be. I got paint all over my gets caught on the, the side of the palm there and then just spreads everywhere. So let's see. And I think there's a couple other streams going on right now. I think uh, Katie over popping the popcorn has a stream happening right now. So we can always jump over there and say, Hey, I think this eye is just about done. Lashes are jagged. Yeah. That's a, one of the good things about this type of art is you don't have to be very, very accurate as to things, but I can always go back in and, and I'll usually, what I'll do is I'll go in and do like a, you know, a rough, rough lay down of paint here. And when you're, when I'm done with that, I'll go back in and like, finesse or fine tune things because like there's a little you know there, there's little things like that because there's actually i can put more lashes in there and i probably will because i think maybe maybe there would be a good one or there something there and i, I need to strengthen up this line as well And I think I'm going to, let's see here, I'm actually going to do a little, I'm doing a little bit of, a little bit of this dark to more circular, or distinguish the eye. Right there, right there. And take this. I'm gonna... Connect that. And then... All the rest of that is going to be... I know. Let's be honest. Sam shines when she's killing, so the jagged lashes seemed right. She, you know what? I think she's a very efficient killer. Well, you know what? Let me let me take that back. She's not efficient. She's a very excited killer, because she was able to stab old Wayne Bailey. How many times she stabbed him? Like thirty something times. Without killing him. So. I don't know if that's luck. Or if that was. 
she was trying not to kill him. She went a lot for the arms. Like she turned that dude's arms into like Swiss cheese. All right. I got to lean over a little bit more. I wanted to make sure I didn't get the. Uh... Let's go. Now, yeah, you know what? She, man, she went for it. She just all out. And it was in the costume as well, which I appreciate her putting on the costume to, to go all, to go all Loomis on him, <laughs> which is what he wanted. I mean, that's the funny part to me is he was trying to, trying to get her to put it on. When uh, when she first got in there, and then she's like, "Okay, all right, you want me in this costume? You're gonna have to deal with me in this costume." And uh, well, I think uh, I don't think he was prepared to handle Sam Carpenter in the costume. Danielle, I've heard people say that, that they think Tara looks excited. I I just, I don't get that feeling from it. I don't know. I, I think it's very similar to the, um, when the first trailer came out, everyone, you know, there was that shot of Sam or Tara hanging over the balcony and everyone said, oh, Tara looks very suspicious there. Looks like she's got a secret. And it, I don't know. I think it's something similar to that. I think she was happy that she she knew she could take care of herself in that moment like she was able to she was able to take out this threat against her right and i think she was happy about that as she should be but i i think i don't think she got like I don't think she got the Sam kind of feeling from it. Because I think Sam does have an enjoyment out of it. Um, I don't think Tara got the same kind of thing. Like I said, I think Tara was just momentarily excited that she knew she could take care of herself. And then, because you're, I mean, what happens immediately afterwards is she like starts crying. So, I don't know. I think it's... I think there's more, more of Tara knowing that she's capable in that scene. But I, you know what? I could be wrong. I'm, I'm not always right. Just most of the time, you know. <laughs> oh, Danielle, man, I've watched that. I've watched that movie so many times. I've um, I've watched that movie more than most people I know. For that reason, because I wanted to, you know, I'm I'm investigating these things. It's, you know, finding little clues and little details and stuff. Um, and I, you know, like I said, I It was a surprise thing to me. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how they go. I, as far in in my opinion, Radio Silence is not the best at sticking with storylines, or you know, um, things like that. So I, there's a chance it may never come into play again. There's a chance that we don't even get Tara back. If I'm being honest, she's so so huge right now. Jenna Ortega is that. I think there's a decent possibility that they wait too long to do Scream 7 and she can't be in it because of other commitments or she's too expensive. I know a lot of people don't want that. Most people don't want to hear that, but I think it's a very real possibility. I think Ethan Ethan really had a thing for Tara. I don't know. 
I, I don't know if it was like a serial killer kind of thing or like a legitimate kind of thing, but just the way he the way he reacts to her and the way he he speaks to her and stuff is just a I don't know, man. I don't know. He he seems like there's something going on there. I like Ethan personally. I think Ethan was I think Ethan was unhinged and did a really good job at hiding it. But because he did such a good job, I think people people just see him as a, a pansy or a, a quote unquote simp. Which I mean, he he displayed those characteristics. I just kind of I think per I think it was on purpose. I don't think he actually is that way. So I could be wrong though. Danielle, that would be a Maggie level mistake. Maggie left The Walking Dead to do her own show and a great many fans just don't like the actress anymore for cutting out. Maggie. Is Maggie the one that now has her a new show with the Is that Maggie? Is Maggie the one that was with Glenn Danielle? I'm I'm a, I'm I cannot think of the, of names right now for some reason. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, she's she's doing another another one right now. Lauren Lauren Co Cohen Cohen or whatever. Yeah, she did that movie The Boy, which I thought was pretty good. Yeah, I thought the I thought the boy was pretty good. I also thought Negan died. I I gave up on The Walking Dead pretty early in. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I found it what I always like to say: too much walking, not enough dead. She did a movie with Mark Wahlberg. I don't. Mm, I don't think I know about that one. I think she's a pretty good actress, though. Oh, look who it is, Sarah Campbell jumping in. How you doing, Sarah? What? Thank you. Um, it's it's still a work in progress. It's it's going to take a little bit. Probably another couple of streams before. Uh, before it fully comes together, but um, I appreciate it. Let's see. I agree, Danielle, to a point. Like, finish what you start, but it's also, I mean... Radio silence, the studio, whoever it is, they gotta they gotta keep up with stuff. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna expect Jenna Ortega to take a you know a huge pay cut to be in this movie if you know she becomes a huge star, which she's obviously already becoming a huge star with with Wednesday coming along. She's right now she's filming the Beetlejuice part two. Um with Christina Ricci, or not Christina Ricci, Winona Ryder and uh, Michael Keaton, like she's she's becoming a huge star, and if they wait too long, they're not going to be able to afford her. And I'm I, I've from a business aspect, I don't expect her to voluntarily take this huge pay cut to work on a movie when the studio should be pushing Scream Seven right now. They should. I don't know what's going on with it. None of us do. I know there's rumors that a script is done, that the, they're going to announce it like next month. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of rumors about Scream 7, but officially we've got nothing. Um, but yeah, Danielle, she's... Um, yeah, she's... 
from what I understand, and I could be wrong, it's Beetlejuice 2 is uh, it's continuing Lydia's story, which is Winona Ryder's character from the very first one. And I believe Jenna Ortega is playing Lydia's daughter, so Winona Ryder's daughter. But Michael Keaton is returning as Beetlejuice, which I think is amazing. Um, but, I mean, like that's just another thing. Like I said, she's getting so popular. I don't know if the studio is going to be willing to pay her what she's worth to come back if they wait too long. Uh, if she already signed a contract, what I see what you're saying there about a, a trilogy contract, that would be amazing because, I mean, she has to. Um, however, I'm just not certain she did. It would be it would be nice if we already had her locked down, but I just... I just, I don't know. I, I don't think they had that forethought, if I'm being honest. Radio silence and... And this current team doesn't seem like they really think several movies ahead. I wish they did, but it does not seem like they do. Um, I said I was going to quit already, but you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going a little bit longer. But yeah, Michael Keaton is back as Batman and as Beetlejuice. I love Michael Keaton. I, I'm so I'm totally cool with it. Yeah, in the Flash, that was a big debacle. The Flash is not doing good. And how not good, you may ask? Well, Fandango um is it's only like the second, third weekend of The Flash being out. And it's a, I mean, let's be honest, it's a blockbuster level movie. This is a DC Universe movie. Fandango is offering buy one, get one free tickets for The Flash. That's right. If you want to go see The Flash in theaters, buy one, get one free tickets. And it's not even a month old yet. You know stuff has gone wrong when Fandango is giving out free tickets to a, a comic book movie a month. Like, that's not even a month old. Yeah, Danielle, Ezra, they, uh, there was a lot, of, a lot of drama, a lot of legal battles surrounding them and everything. I'm not going to comment on that here because I don't know the full story. I do know... I will just say there's been a lot of legal issues with them, and I don't know if that is one of the things impacting it or if it's just, you know, if it's just a DC thing. Because let's be honest, DC usually doesn't do as well as Marvel, unfortunately. Um, there, with a, a, a few exceptions, of course. But, yeah, I, um, I was surprised. I, I just... I hope it's good. Here's the thing. I've heard from the people who I who have seen it, I've heard good things about the movie. I've heard The Flash is good. I think they're just having trouble getting people to support it. So... Which is unfortunate because, you know, a lot of people put a lot of time and hard work into those movies. I mean, you can kind of say that for every movie, though. Just you, you never know what's you never know what's going to be popular, what's going to hit. And they said that about the first screen. No one knew. No one knew the first screen was going to be such a huge hit. All right, got about 10 more minutes in me.
then I'm gonna have to log off and log into work. All right, where are we going with this? I do kind of want to finish that part. I'm trying to do this is really a, a test of my painting uh, posture here because I'm trying to trying to lean down to get these get these angles and stuff without blocking the camera and it's still I'm not gonna lie, it's still giving me issues I'm trying to trying to get close and not block the view. <laughs> You're very welcome, Danielle. I want to do it at least once a week. Um, probably more, but I'm going to do a painting one at least once a week. I haven't done a bracket in a while, so I want to do uh, I want to do another I want to do another bracket stream here soon. Maybe a a bracket or a ranking. What do y'all prefer? You prefer a bracket stream or a ranking stream? She's looking skeletal. <laughs> uh, hopefully, she doesn't look skeletal in the end. Hopefully, it'll come together. I think. I think it will. I think it'll come together at the end and be a be a nice smooth image. You know. But who knows? It could be terrible. I'm not gonna say it's gonna come out great because you know, never like movies. Never really know how it's gonna turn out. I could completely mess it up. Uh, Dan, I just mean like a stream where we, I, I've done a couple where we rank things. You know, like, what's better than other things? So usually I'll do a specific topic like um, ghost faces. I did a ghost face ranking video here soon, or uh, recently, a live stream, which was fun. You know, uh, there was several of us on here. I think there was Destin uh, Kyle from uh, Flats Pop Culture, uh, Steven from Craving Something Scary, and... Who else was it? There was someone else on there. I think um, Marcus from uh, I Shot Him Six Times was on, and we ranked our favorite ghost faces, or we ranked all of the ghost faces, actually. Um, not going to lie, I was surprised by some of, the, some of their rankings. But uh, that or I like to do some where we have a, a bracket of, of like, I did, let's see here, Final Girls. That's a good one. We did Final Girls. And we, You just pit them against each other, and the, the chat votes on who wins, and whoever wins moves on to the next round. And doing that, we decide who the ultimate Final Girl is. Can you rank theories? Um, you know what? You could rank theories based on like likelihood or believability. That'd be something I could rank, yeah. You know what, Danielle? I was thinking of doing Final Guys. I just I don't know that many of them. Um, I, I wish I could remember his name, but the the guy from Nightmare on Elm Street Two, he's a good one. Um, I guess I would throw Dewey in there. Dewey's um, Dewey's a great Final Guy. You could put Chad. Chad could be considered a Final Guy for sure. But see, here's the thing. I, I think it, when you get to that point, you're, you maybe you maybe muddle up a little bit what it means to be a final. And the reason I say final girl, obviously, we all know we love horror movies. The trope is the final girl. It's always been that way. 
since Sally Hardesty and um, from Texas Chainsaw and uh, obviously Lori from original Halloween. But I think there, I think there's a difference between a final girl and just a, a woman who survives the movie. Because like Sydney, we know Sydney is the final girl. We all know that. But Gail has also survived every movie. So, and I count Gail. When I did the bracket, I, I counted Gail. I wish there were more final guys to rank. There's plenty of guys who survive. Like I said, that's that's one thing. Plenty of guys survive. And maybe I just don't know, but honestly, um, Jesse from Nightmare 2 is the only actual final guy I can think of. Which sucks. I would love for there to be more to count, but it's just, you know, you know, you know the tropes. And you, they're called tropes for a reason. A lot of movies stuck to them. All right, y'all. I know there's a... Uh... Oh, Josh from H2O. He... I guess he was just as much a final guy as Lori was the final girl in that movie. Yeah, I would consider him... I'd take him down. I'd put him on the list. You know what? Danielle, you've inspired me. We might do a final guy ranking or a final guy uh, bracket. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a sucker for a good bracket. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna schedule that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that on the books. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying, Russell. There's there's not that many, but I'm gonna come up with some who I who I consider. I got at least four in my head now. We got Jesse, Chad, Dewey. Um, I wish I could remember Josh Hartnett's character's name from the from the movie, but um, I'm gonna come up with some, and we're gonna do. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna schedule it later this week. But yeah, we're gonna have a final guy bracket. I'm excited about it. All right, y'all. Um, I am gonna call it here. I'm gonna have to log into work in just a few minutes, so. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it. Thanks so much for sticking out with me. I'm uh, hope you're liking the way Sam's coming along. I will. Uh, I'm gonna schedule another one. Obviously, I'm, I'm gonna not work on this until you know until another stream. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold myself back as much as I do want to work on it. So I finish this all live. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna call it there. Thanks so much for watching. If you're watching live, thanks for sticking out this long. If you're watching on the replay, thanks for sticking out this long. Uh, if you would, please uh, give the video a like uh, when the, the live stream's over. If you don't mind coming back when it's on replay mode and leaving a comment, all that stuff really does help out with the YouTube algorithm. But yeah, other than that, I'm going to get going. Thank you so much. I love you all and have a safe week.